<laughs> hey everybody, this is Obi. I uh, got involved in all of this uh, back at the beginning when Mark and I were hanging out around 4th of July in Mount Shasta here. And at one point when uh, he'd come back into town, I had gone and seen uh, Dr. Len some months before that up at Stewart Springs uh, Mineral Bath House outside of Weed that I like to frequent. Um, and I was very impressed with what I uh, picked up from Dr. Len the evening that we spent together. He had a introductory evening, a Friday evening thing preceding the Saturday and Sunday workshop that he was doing there. And um, he told us all that if we got what he was trying to communicate in that evening that we didn't need to come back. And uh, I'm not so sure I got it, but I certainly got some kind of a download and wanted to share that with the world if I had a chance. So lo and behold, just handing it to Mark, it ended up with this little bit of chain reaction unbeknownst to me. And I'm delighted to be that small part of it. So here I am. Um, reflecting back the joy of that part being played out. Going back to that evening, the biggest thing that struck me about what Dr. Lin was teaching us was this, this issue of taking 100% responsibility. Um, it just it just really resonated with me for some reason. I'd been playing with the idea for some time, but his insistence that we are 100% responsible and that that's the key to having the magic of Ho'oponopono, um, or for that matter, probably anything that's, that works similarly, um, a way of our embracing our responsibility and uh, then opening the, the doors that come from, from doing that um, was intriguing to me, and his story of having worked in the the mental institution or the um, hospital for the criminally insane in, in Hawaii, uh, as I recall, he spent about five years there, and in that time, had the an incredible transformation take place there. That's it's just one heck of a feather in one's cap to be able to. Uh, you know, come from a place of like getting one's attention. He, he definitely had my attention and I'm sure that's worked for a lot of folks. Um, it's between those two factors, it, it, it really struck home for me that there's something here. And so I carried from that uh, meeting with him some eight, 10 years ago. Um, and then, uh, you know, with Mark and Joe, going ahead and doing the, the, the Zero Limits project together and all with Dr. Lin. Um, it just, my being becoming reintroduced to it by way of Zero Limits brought me up to speed with some of those ideas, those feelings that I was having back then. And again, I'm, I'm delighted that um, it's come back into my life that way. So, so clearly, so, um, I mean, not just a vague thing out there, but that it's actually specifically practicing Ho'oponopono more in my life than I had been uh, up to the point when I found that Joe and Mark were actually took this ball and ran with it. Yeah, Dr. Len, um, I was, I felt um, a, a real sweetness from him that evening that we met. He, during a break about halfway through the evening, uh, people were up and moving around and we made some eye contact across the room and um, I kind of think of myself as someone who reads vibes more than anything else as kind of a way of navigating uh, you know and who I want to connect with and who I don't and how much of a connection there might be and I felt a really nice strong kind of brother connection with the man and, and we kind of worked our way around the perimeter of the room uh, little by little over the you know, few minutes of the break and met and he first thing as I recall he said he looked at me with a big smile on his face and he said Mount Shasta has been good good to you and I just laughed and I knew that what I was feeling in his presence 
and then hearing that from him that yeah this is all confirming uh, that this 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 man has a really um, he has a wonderful handle if you will on on um, reality and um, what, what what reality's for what it's about how how to how to be and uh, then watching him, I haven't seen him personally since then, but watching the Zero Limits DVD and, and uh, some of the other cuts from, from some of that editing and whatnot, it again reminded me of what a um, wonderful servant and the work that he's doing. Um, yeah, his it's... Deep, he, he impresses me, and I'm not, I'm not that easily impressed. Earlier, Mark and I were talking, and the, um, the subject of, of Dr. Emoto came up. And a uh, funny thing, Dr. Emoto was up at Stewart Springs about a year ago himself, and I, although I didn't get a chance to meet him, I was familiar with his work to a degree. And um, what, I, what I see this DVD is about is... Um, so it dovetails with with what Dr. Moto is trying to communicate. I believe he's trying to communicate with us that whatever we do in the way of putting our or projecting our thought forms onto reality, whatever the the screen of our movie, that uh, it, we are the maker of that movie and. Those those thoughts, if they're loving thoughts or if they're they're um, fearful thoughts, whatever kind of thoughts they might be, or f thoughts and feelings, um, this takes that imprint. And so I'm I'm hoping and um, praying that this project, this DVD, reaches out and touches a lot of people because of that intent. The if it was a beaker of water and I was Dr. Moto, we'd be putting this label on the outside of the of the, the beaker saying, you know, I love you, please forgive me, thank you. Um, and that that impression takes that 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 we as part of our mastery of this plane that we uh, use what we're learning here in the process. I'm learning as we're going through this, as well as I hope the, uh, you all out there are learning that um, we're, we're imprinting our world with whatever, whatever it is that we're holding in our mind and in our heart. And so I'm hoping that this helps us all to imprint in, into our movie, into our world, uh, something much more joyful than what it looks like the state of things are today on planet earth and i i'm hoping that it acts that that we're being a part of i'm, I'm i feel assured that we're a part of some kind of uh playing a part of being that transformation that we all really know we need to allow so that this experience of being family on planet earth really comes into uh, a wholeness it really come it really it, it blossoms forth and not just an idea or something that poets write about and mystics you know sit in, in in a state and experience but that we all come to some deep sense of that and i feel strongly that ho'oponopono is a component of, of that uh, on planet earth today that that it's taken off because people really want this you could say it's needed but I think it's needed because we want it I think it's it's something that we we know we owe ourselves you know, to come to uh, to love one another and to forgive one another and to, to own where it is